Hey, I'm back. Okay, well, I'm in the truck. That's the rear of your joint. See, I have the kind you can grease. They're uh, called super strength U joints, is what they used to be called. I think they. I think they're called that, but they have a different brand name now. They got bought out or something. I've used them since 92 or so, 93 when I bought the truck. <laughs> and the screwdrivers and stuff are falling out of my little pocket. So I'll have to take them out. This uh, truck's been in this spot for a long time. So the dirt on here, and I had to sweep it up. When it rains, the, the dirt washes across here. Usually, keep it pretty clean when I want to, you know, for doing stuff like that. But uh, I'm not sure where my. Anyway, I have a. You have a. a I have a mini grease gun, and I don't know if you can see this really, but. Uh, you may, I don't know if you've seen these, but you have a little clip-on pointy deal that you can grease these kind with. And uh, that's what I use for this. Got a... Oh, there's one right there. It looks like... Yeah, there it is. So I don't need to be way over yonder. That's, I got lucky. Both of them are pointing right at me. That's cool. My glasses are steaming up. I thought they would help. Help me see and help me get, uh, help me not get dirt mines if I, you know, when you always, pretty much, well, this creeper doesn't roll real good, so I always have to use, uh, really knock the camera. I never ran into the, uh, let's see if I moved it. Looks like it's okay. Yeah, I'm like one half inch. <laughs> the head of the creeper is like one half inch from, from the tripod. So, uh, <coughs> try to get the dirt out of here first so that I don't be pushing dirt into it. But it has a little needle valve on it. Well, the round ones do too, but this one's down in a little, instead of the regular big round ones, it's down in a little chamfered or area or maybe you could call it it's like a counter sink sort of but anyway this pillow is not high enough but at least it helps me my head my neck can't stand I can't support my neck like this anymore sometimes when they've been sitting they don't want to open up and let you put stuff in this one may be too empty I might have to get another one You know, it seems like I just remembered. I don't know if it was the front shaft or the rear. One of these I couldn't get to open up, and I ended up putting a rec taking it out, putting a regular one in there to get it to grease, and then I probably tried to clean it up and put it back. There's not much left in here. It's my problem. Dang it. Okay, I got to go get another one. Yeah, it's just empty. I like to use every drop of them. I don't want to waste this stuff. It's not cheap. So, I'm going to have to go run around here and get another one. <coughs> In the toolbox. <coughs> <coughs> I'm just going to leave it like it is. <coughs> Come back.
come back. I'm just trying to change this for now. I forgot to say anything. Yeah, it's a little bit left. Maybe enough to... If you're using it with your fingers, it's enough to get out of there. Couldn't really do it up there in front of the camera. I gotta be sitting on it to do this. This is a really handy grease gun though. I just keep it in my toolbox in the truck. I got it for that little pointy thing, but also so that I can have one with me. When I first got the truck, I used to four wheel a lot. And you know, I figured, well, if I'm going to go run it through water and stuff, I should, uh, and sand and all that, I should uh, grease them uh, pretty often, you know. <laughs> really, ideally, I thought, you know, I'd grease them before I took off to go back home or something. I don't, know if I ever, I don't think I ever did that. But. Or if you have, a, I have used it when I had... Uh, the joints break on the road and I had to replace it. I've always tried to keep, tried to keep new ones in my toolbox. And if they break, I'll pull over and fix it. I used to. We well, have to sometimes. Uh, usually I'd always just come home on my front shaft, but uh, now I couldn't go very far. I mean, the front shaft's all good, but the uh, left driver's side now it's working. The driver's side uh, it's coming out of this one, but I want it to go through the whole thing. Yeah, that's working good. The uh, driver's side axle bearing, out, outer axle bearing is bad. And so it works. You know, you can drive it in four wheel drive for a little while, but it will really start making noise. And I don't want to destroy anything in there. I was looking at them the other day. I've looked at them on and off for years. I never have felt up to replacing it. But, uh, it's really, I just saw the other day that it, I was looking at it and I was like, oh, that really looks a lot easier than I remember. I've never done the inner axle bearing. You know, the wheel bearings, I've done, several, I've done that a lot on this thing. That's a pain right there. And that, actually, I, yeah, you do have to take that off. Well, it depends. You can buy a hub, X bearing, and everything all together for about 75 bucks. And I never knew that. Never saw that before. And uh, that wouldn't be a bad idea. And I put it in nickel, but it still don't go anywhere. And that's good, though, because, I mean, it's good that I can get to it. I can't see. It kept coming out of that other one. And so much, so fast that it kind of worries me as to what kind of shape that uh, U joint is in. This one right here. I'm glad I did that for to that reason for finding that out, and also just I'm sure it needed grease. I might hit it again. No way. I see. Yeah, I see some coming out this back one. That's what I was looking for. So it went all the way through it. So I'm going to test drive it after this. And if it, uh, and then I'll get back under here and see if I can see you. It fool you every time. You'll think, oh, it's not moving. And I mean, the whole, you know, there's a little slop in the in the differential, so it makes it even harder to tell if your U joints are moving. And they really don't move too much before they all of a sudden let go. And see, this thing being jacked up, it's got it's got aftermarket springs that. Well, and there's a block. There's about a, it's about four inches on the front, about six on the back. It's an angled block. I had not remembered that. So there's a lift on the back, and you know, I didn't think there's no block in the front, but it sets level. Anyway, it does have aftermarket springs on the front. I know because uh, 
I went and bought uh, bushings for the front end springs years ago and put them on and the stock ones wouldn't fit. I had to order the right brand, the place where I got it. Uh, well, the guy in the store, you know, it's called Mike's Off-Road up in Fort Worth, Texas, and Mike, I, I started going to him before he had a big place, and he used to work on this. I didn't know how to work on it. And uh, I, I had him, you know, put rebuild my transfer case when I blew it up, doing burnouts on the street. I thought it was a tank when I first bought it, but it's not a tank. You can break it. It's a no big burnouts on the street. Unless you've got some super duper parts in your truck. So anyway, uh, just rendered, wasting money on expensive tires anyway. So uh, anyway, he uh, he he moved to a bigger garage after a few years, and then uh, well, he was already selling parts like kind of like out of the catalog. But then he started he had a parts store. And so anyway. He took one look at the springs and he said, well, those are aftermarket springs. So I had to reorder. It had to be ordered anyway. But uh, he put that rear end in there too, where his guy did. Because I tore that up too once. Tore up the spider gears. Front end, I've never, never done anything to it other than front uh, axle, uh, spindle bearings. But, uh, Oh, I forgot to move the camera. This is where I'm really at. Let's see, here's my leg at. I can't see. Where am I? There. Can't see a thing there, can you? Grease. I was trying to keep my little rag out of the dirt. I've got all my blue gloves and some old greasy leather, leather gloves. There, can we see it now? I can't tell. We're in the picture. I just can't tell what could make it possibly show up properly. I think I'm a little high now. That mirror, everything reflects and does this and that. Well, it may be. Hopefully, it's better picture than it looks like to me. It usually is. That's why I leave it on auto focus and auto white balance and everything. Because when you're moving around, it's conditions change. When the sun moves, the conditions change. Oh, my neck is killing me already. So, yeah, one thing I always liked about working in this driveway here is. Uh, when it's clean, you don't, you're not wallowing in the dirt and the dust. But it's dirty today. But I'm, that's why I'm using the creeper. I usually don't use it most of the time. It's hard. It doesn't roll good, and it just works to death. But it does give you a place to lay your head, so it'll, it's just not high enough. Years ago, I had put an extra bunch of foam on it. made it like a pillow on it. It actually helped. If you really grease the heck out of your bearings, like I did that back when a lot of it got wasted, You'll use up one of these tubes on about three engines. Yeah, it's coming out. But I'd rather use up grease than e joints. But with it uh, being jacked up, that's probably enough. With it being jacked up, it's uh, whoever did it, you know, before I bought it, it's uh, it's not the drive line angle is not perfect, not just right, and so it's a severe angle on that back e joint. Stock e joints will just break in a when I was driving every day, about 30, well, about 60 miles a day or more, 30 miles to well, about 20, 25 miles each way to work, so about 60 miles a day. Uh, they would sometimes only last a couple of months, and that's even without even doing any footwear. So actually, it was the road driving, I think, that made it wear out because the constant spinning, you know, constant grinding, really. So, yeah, I believe it came out. Yeah, I see it. Okay, it came out on this side too. This one usually doesn't. Sometimes it's had it break. That's the one that's scary because when that hits the ground, you could uh, 
uh, uh, I heard horror stories, and I, it's happened. I mean, I've seen videos, and of course, back in the 70s when I was a kid, I was a hot rodder. We used to race up and down Jacksboro Highway 199 here, right, right behind my house here. We used to top end race. And uh, back then there wasn't traffic and you could do that. One ain't lights way back then if you live out here. And you know what it's like now. And uh, so you could race a good six or eight miles, you know, top end, pretty straight. And uh, anyway, there was a story of a kid that, uh, remember if I knew it was true or not now, but the, his, his U-joint broke, it dug into the ground and flipped his car end over in and killed him. And the kid, actually I think the kid that told one, well, he was, I don't know if he told me the story, but he's familiar with it. I used I used to top and race him sometimes. He had a Ford, ah, Ford something, Fairlane or not Fairlane, it was like a 69 or 70 fastback Ford with a 390 big block. It was pretty fast to hop in. Big old heavy car. But anyway, before we graduated high school in 11th grade or something like that, maybe 12th grade, he uh, he died. He killed his, He killed himself out there top end racing. So, uh, I had a couple of close calls. So, uh, you know, after a couple of close calls, I learned to be a little more careful about certain things. Like, uh, well, I kind of did quit. I don't know. I didn't quit top end. Well, I got more into drag racing, but I always wanted to go to the tracks and do it, but I never did. I just did it. Really, I just kind of drag raced everywhere I went with nobody to race <laughs> most of the time. But uh, anyway, yeah, I didn't slow down until I got, got this truck really in my spot when I was about 35, I guess. But I also was not completely crazy like some people because I saw people die. I knew, of course, I mean, I knew somebody that died, and I knew other people that got, had bad wrecks. So. Now I can't really think fast enough to drive fast. Okay, now I, wanted, I need to do the front shaft, too. It's going to be a pain, but let's see. I think I will, yeah, I can slip these, slip my tools over there. I don't think I need that. Pull this rag up that way. And these tools. Really only need the one screwdriver, I guess. The one with the, I think I'll put it in my uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll put it in my pocket. I think maybe it'll stay in there until I get over there. Because I'm gonna try to do is slide this over. It's on the gotta go to the other side and then take the camera over that way. And then I'll be ready to film over there. Since I'm already going, hopefully, still. Yep. Okay. We'll just take you with me on my pick the trip. Now I gotta get around here. Then that next, I mean, my neck can only hold up to that. I used to spend hours under a car, and now I can only. I can only do it. I can only do it this few minutes here. I lost my glove. There it is. I lost my hat that keeps my hair from getting rolled over by the creeper. I'm gonna have to get my head out and fix that. Oh, come on. I can't fix it under here. This side has legs, but the creeper will drop off of So I was trying not to have to deal with that. Okay, hat's all the way off. Put this camera where it's gonna go. Everything has gone crazy on me here. Got my gloves off and I keep dropping them in the dirt. I get dirt inside of them. At least I got the blue gloves on. I don't like getting that old grease all over me. And since I was gonna drive the truck, I'd rather not have it all over my pants too. Set down in my cloth seats. I don't want to fool with this hat, but I guess I'm doing and get the creeper out. It won't move. It's stuck. That's why I don't feel like I can use them. Sometimes I'm more in trouble than I want help. Okay. I'm going to have to try to do this under here. I'm going to fall in the dirt trying to get up out of here. Hit my head on this short stuff up here. Yeah. 
this wears me out a lot these days. Okay, now. Uh, rest. Gotta rest the neck a little bit. I know the camera's not aimed, but I can't help it. See where that thing is. I think I see it. There's one of them. Yeah, this creeper is what's wearing me out. We'll roll over here on this side. I guess I should have put some cardboard down or something to slide around on. I might do that. This is killing me. Because I got a lot more moving to do. Okay. I'm gonna. Now I remember why I really never used the creeper. There's a. All besides it, the wheels being kind of worn out. There's all kinds of worn out divots in the concrete and it's just, this is where it's too dirty now to use, I think. It just won't roll on this side at all. So I'm going to get out, get some cardboard, and uh, do it that way. Get that keeping the pants clean. I know I wouldn't. Okay. I don't turn the camera off until I get it set up again. So I can reach it. Uh, and get it set up and everything. Okay. Wow. It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be.